Hey everybody out there in podcast land, this is your host, Severin Henderson. This is Firecast, as presented by Department 3C. Um, this is just a generic intro. Probably means I wasn't able to get into the studio to put an intro together, but I still wanted to provide a podcast, and I wanted to provide an intro to what we were going to be talking about. So hopefully you enjoy the episode, and you can read in the comments or the show notes description what the episode is all about. But like I said, I just wanted to put something together so that you can know that it's your favorite podcast. <laughs> All that being said, I usually say this at the end, but I'll put it here. Please reach out with any comments, likes, dislikes, any information that you want to pass on to us. Our email address is info at department3c.com. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks again for listening. Bye. The one thing I wanted to say to you guys, I said I'll save it for the podcast, is because you two are my least like but favorite coaches because you two are like the hardest. <laughs> you you two you. are definitely the toughest. And like sometimes when I see y'all and I see y'all name on the thing, I'm like, should I push this button? I, I don't know how, how this is going to go. Who's the, who's the easiest? And then we'll get, we'll, we'll bust well, their but ass. There is no easiest. <laughs> How good. That's a great answer. Yeah, no, honestly, there 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 is no easiest. There's nobody we'll that's like, them into shape. I'm, I'm looking to, to, to go just their class just because the, all you guys are tough um and like even when we were setting this up you said which coach i said i, I don't care because everybody's good and you guys send out those um what do you think of this person type of thing and i'm so nice i'm gonna say everybody's dope but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the truth everybody that's is what, i mean really that's, good. it's genuinely kind of the way that we drew it up is that like swish house is the brand and it isn't like because it, it other or uh, other fitness area you know locations or just other fitness businesses like it's just all about these superstar trainers, whereas like we feel that like it, it like swish house the product in the it is the brand, mm -hmm. and like no matter where you go, like no you're gonna just get a great, great, great workout. You're gonna have a great experience, and that's how we really try to train all of our trainers to deliver a great experience, but also like empower them because all of our coaches are ex pro collegiate hoopers to like put their own personality into it, their own spin on it. You know what I mean? Like everybody's got their own you know shooting games and different stations they like to do and uh, you know so it's it's kind of we try to strike the right balance of like providing the right framework and the template mm -hmm. of of you know the call it the swish house class experience but like give that give each coach like the autonomy to like put their own kind of spin on it you know okay I mean? so that you don't go and it feels monotonous the same ever yeah that's, that's the that's thing it. every no every class is different um and i've been to countless i mean i'm sure i can count it on the mind body app but it is like I can tell there's a structure because certain coaches, you can hear them use vocabulary like, OK, we're going to do throwback drills now and yeah. then we're going to do this part of the class now and switch yeah. lab now. And just the way they use it is is great. Now, one more thing I want to say before I forget, and especially at the top of the podcast here, the, um, we're in the beautiful 167 or 167 Green Street yep. building, mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of people see um, a lot of the videos and yep. a lot of the commercials for Swish House. And it is just as dope in person as it is that you see on the videos. <laughs> no doubt. But one day we were here, and that sun sometimes will beat you up depending on what day. Yeah, you got the lines down yeah. on the thirty foot <laughs> and, uh, um, windows. I don't Sometimes. know. Her, I don't know her last name, but Kristen Hydloff. Yeah. Hydloff. Um, she went to Georgetown, right? Yeah, she was. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's in the Illinois Basketball Hall of Fame. Really? Yeah, I could kind of tell uh, that. She played at Fenwick, but didn't know that Oak Park River Force. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. she. She is phenomenal. She's great. Um, she's another one of my favorites. But what she did, I think she's the hardest. <laughs> nah, y'all two be her. Me and Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> she's she's not the hardest. She she's, she's Kristen she's, was the one in the early days where she was she would come to me and Trevor, who's you know Trevor's the the architect of the the class experience. Really, him and Kristen and like Kristen, our whole thing was like it just needs to be like kind of nostalgic and yeah, you just people having a good time. And she's like, no, it has to be like the best workout ever. And we were like, 
Because it's a fitness company. <laughs> Trevor and I were like, yeah, that's probably a good point. You know what I mean? Like, we got to do, like, a bunch of other, like, shit other than just basketball. No, she's like, the like, toughest. The cross training, the strength stuff, the cardio. And, you know, she's she's really, like, pushed us on that. She's the toughest. Like, you don't want to mess with her. Tough, yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. You guys are the hardest. Um, <laughs> especially Caitlin. Oh, one day, I, like, wanted to run away from you. One day here, I'm like, oh, I got to. And then she's like, come on, just. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, Kristen, what she did, like I said, we're in this beautiful building. Um, the shades, they didn't have the shades for us this yeah. certain day. She ran the entire class, a full class, not just a baby class, a full class. And we only used one side of the court just no so way. nobody would that get bright. blinded <laughs> by the shades. I thought yeah. that was the most creative on the spot thing yeah, I have yeah. ever seen heard experienced in the coaching world period yeah, yeah, yeah. so i had to give her a super shout out on that no doubt that was tough. yeah we've had to adjust on the fly at many facilities over the years you know well that one I remember early in the early great. days at mercy home like one time we walked in there in like february and like the heat had gone out mm -hmm. <laughs> you could like see your breath You're like everybody just wear your hoodies you know like we're gonna get a workout yeah just know? run extra hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so what what you said jonathan was wherever you go, you get a workout. And when I first found Swish House and went on the website, I saw different locations. Yep. I've only been here in Chicago, so let's talk a little bit about other locate, like other cities sure. and everything. Sure. Well, the, the long-term vision is that Swish House will be in every major global city, you know, at least in, in North America, potentially the globe long-term. Um, but we also think it's viable in mid-sized cities, even small towns. I, You know, my the co-founder, Dave Holtzmiller, and I, uh, and Trevor Huffman, for that matter. We all of us grew up in ten thousand person towns in Michigan and Ohio. I think Swish House is viable in those types of uh, cities too. I think if they can support CrossFit gyms in smaller cities, I think there's no question a Swish House location can thrive. But mm -hmm. right now, we are two call it flagship locations. Our you know cities are Chicago mm -hmm. and New York. Mm -hmm. um, we have affiliate uh, locations in Traverse City, Michigan, a small town of twenty thousand people in northern Michigan, mm -hmm. and uh, we're we're experimenting with a location in Detroit as well. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of got our leaders there. We haven't put the full oomph of the Swish House kind of resources behind those two cities yet but we we wanted to kind of we have uh, several of the founders and owners have deep ties to detroit mm -hmm. um we have a bunch of investors too that live in the metro detroit area that are going to help us you know blow that up eventually mm -hmm. but uh really the focus is right now in chicago and new york so in new york we have one location a singular location in brooklyn and then here in chicago we have four locations soon to be seven locations as of january so we're opening up uh we're reopening a west loop location uh, our original location, which is Mercy Home, and then um, we're opening up in uh, Wicker Park at a Catholic high school, a Catholic girls' high school in Wicker Park, and then um, we are opening our first college uh, location on UIC's campus within their recreation uh, facilities, which is a big deal because um, okay. we we have a we have a plan to open on other college campuses as well across the country. So. Okay. Um, um, one yeah. thing I forgot to do, we kind of just jumped into it. We, I didn't introduce you guys. I just said, switch house, sure. talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Caitlin, let's start with you. Just give us a quick introduction to yourself, what you do, what you do for Swish House, all that other fun stuff. Okay, cool. So my name is Caitlin Ackerman. I am the general manager of Swish House Chicago, and I played Division Two basketball at a Northeast 10 school, Assumption University. And I've been involved with Swish House since I first moved uh, to Chicago, originally when it was called Hoops Link, actually. Mm -hmm. And primarily uh, at that time, it was a pickup community. Mm -hmm. um, and so I ran some pickup there. We did a lot of uh, philanthropic work with Mercy Home, uh, running their Hoops to Homework program. And then I moved from Chicago. And when I moved, uh, Jonathan and I stayed really connected, um, talked pretty regularly stayed up to date with what Hoops Link and Swish House, you know, how, where I've been doing. And then when I moved back almost two years ago, I started coaching for mm. them. So went through the training, was coaching classes, um, much of the time really close uh, with all the other coaches. And then I went on a sabbatical to Europe. Mm. And when I came during that time, I was kind of transitioning to come back as a general manager. And mm. so I've been the general manager since May. And yeah, a lot of what I do is supporting our member experience, supporting our coaches, uh, ensuring that everybody is taken care of, whether it's from 
membership requests to learning more about the brand through social media and sales experiences uh, to ensuring that our coaches are supported and delivering the best that they can. Okay, that sounds excellent. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, like I said, we just kind of sat down and started sure, talking. Yeah, yeah. So let me get an introduction of yourself. And Sure, sure. Uh, I'm the, the, the co-founder and CEO of the company. Um, I started the, the company originally with uh, a very close friend of mine, Dave Holtzmiller from Childhood. We're the original two founders. We've since now brought in a total of uh, almost 50 investors now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, Caitlin is a perfect case study of, everything starts with like supremely talented people and leaders to like run the business and run the programming. Right. So that's, I think, you know, we, we've just naturally come across, like we, we've really never had to do a lot of like job postings for Swish House because Mm -hmm. the company's owned the 35 of the 50 investors are ex professional or collegiate hoopers that have just deep, deep basketball networks. And so Caitlin's one of the people that when we we have an interesting business model where we typically don't own or operate our own real estate, our own facilities. We activate existing courts that align with our mission of helping people get healthier and happier through basketball. And the place that we started the company is how we met Caitlin. Um, she was volunteering as a social worker, correct? You know, it was like a, a master's. Was it like a, a master's program that you were doing there? Remind me. It was what an was AmeriCorps it? year. AmeriCorps. That's right. Okay. Um, so... It's this Catholic institution that uh, in the West Loop, right in the, you know, nestled right in the heart of the West Loop, and it's just got a great old school Catholic gymnasium. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, but it's a home for abused, neglected, and troubled Chicago kids. I happened to live across the street. My wife and I moved to the neighborhood in 2009. I started just volunteering there, mm-hmm. working with the kids, uh, helping volunteer to a, a thing called Hoops to Homework. Uh, which is now run by us and the Chicago Bulls uh, community team. It's essentially a league for uh, the kids that live there. Um, we we put them through you know, on Sundays like a 45-minute Swish House workout, and then we have a bunch of volunteer coaches that are several Swish House coaches, several Swish House members. Mm-hmm. It's a place to kind of come in and volunteer. And so we we started the company there, um, and that's how we met Caitlin. And we just, you know, you, you find people that really kind of get the business. And, you know, Caitlin's one of the people that as soon as she started getting involved with it, she had to be a part of it informally. And then it mm-hmm. led to a full-time career and hopefully a really long-term lucrative full-time career yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, her yeah. and all of us, right? So... We just basically find great leaders. I mean, the Swish House model is pretty simple. We we find great leaders to work together to find great locations to operate out of, our mm. community gym partners, and then we sell memberships to the basketball community, adults who dig hoops and are looking for an, a better way to get fit and stay fit doing something they enjoy. That was the original idea. Mm-hmm. So it's basically organized um, basketball fitness classes that have a very you know well thought out, call it experiential arc to the class. There's Mm -hmm. seven pillars to the class. That's the primary sizzle, the primary product and service that we offer, these organized group fitness classes that you can be an ex-NBA player down to a total novice, out of shape, you know, Mm 50-something. And any fitness or talent level in between can do those classes. And then for those who love to still play competitively, have organized pickup games. Mm -hmm. And then a big revenue generator that Caitlin has led a lot of our development of is just events you know mm-hmm. we can do everything from you know high octane three on three tournaments to corporate wellness events to you know just people that want to buy out a fitness class like for their organization their company bring you know it's basketball is the ultimate team sport you don't have to be good at hoops to do a swish house class so we mm-hmm. have a lot of corporate events that we do um just basically bringing people together through basketball mm-hmm. um in a really well thought out organized fashion that's a you know you buy a membership to the same way you do you know, to Orange Theory or yep. CrossFit or yep. Soul Cycle. Yeah, right? that's kind of the concept. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. That that makes yeah. total sense. Um, that's that, a long winded answer to who. No, I am. that's exactly <laughs> that's how a, I met her. That's Dude's exactly what house. I wanted. <laughs> you know what? And and you can see and feel and understand the passion. Like he even says it while he's teaching in the class. Like mm-hmm. besides my family, this is the most important thing to me. <laughs> and then you like <laughs> feel it. And it's and it's real. I, I like it that. It is real, man. It's like I, you know, I wasn't good enough to like make it to the NBA. This is like this is the NBA for me, man. Yeah, you know? like I was a pretty good player a long time ago, but this, like, it's the biggest deal in the world. It's everything like I've ever worked on. You know what I mean? Kind of. I have. I've always had an entrepreneurial itch. Um, I've done some pretty legitimate entrepreneurial things in the. 401k investment industry, which isn't nearly as fun as uh, yeah, basketball, yeah. but I've yeah. used a lot of that stuff I've learned. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but you know, I've 
learned how to start and build businesses, you know what I mean? And build brands and, you know, just, I think yeah, bringing people together has kind of always been a, a skill set of mine, a social planner. Yep. So like that's, that's super me too. Um, I hear a lot of what I think just all the time, because like you said, I'm not the smartest person. Well, if a lot of times when you are the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, you need to have other people in that room that know more than kind of what, what you know. So I appreciate you saying that. For that matter, Swish House works really well because Dave Holtzmiller runs the company. Okay. (laughs) From a day to day operational, financial, legal standpoint, Uh if it were me, we just, it would, you know, it would be a circus. Just roll some balls out and (laughs) figure it out. (laughs) We probably wouldn't be real profitable if it was me doing it. Hey, it, well, it's it's doing it's doing phenomenal things, and even the way um, I found out about Swish House in the first place was so organic. Um, you must have just like sat down and filled out a, like an ad thing for people you're looking for because yes. just all of a sudden I got a friend request from you, <laughs> and I get friend requests from people all the time trying to sell and do stuff and everything, and you know I, I'll at least look at the page, yep. but your page was a real person. It wasn't just yeah. like it, it just wasn't. It was real. It was you. It was your family. It was basketball. Mm-hmm. I saw um, you had sent a friend request to another um, kid I was in the academy with. I shouldn't say kid. I just said it because he's younger than me. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> another <laughs> another um, coworker of mine. He um, was a D one basketball player um, who left playing D one to take the job on the fire department. Anyway, and so just like I said, real person. Okay, I push accept. We it, worst come to yeah. worst, I just. Tell them go away and ignore it later. <laughs> but um, I hounded people in the early days of social of our social media outreach. Well, it didn't even invite me. It didn't even say, "Hey, come take this class." It just was regular. Hey, I'm a person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you probably like basketball. Yeah. Would you think about you know coming to mm-hmm. shoot around? Mm-hmm. And it just kind of grew from there. And. Um, like when we were pre-talking, you said, I don't want to talk your face off about Swiss. I'm like, no, yes, please talk my face off about Swiss. I was, Cause I, I, I just think it's just, I love it. I love it because like you said, group fitness is to me the way I need to go. I've had gym memberships and I'll go and I'll sit around and I'll mess around on a machine or yep. look at my phone or look up in the space and everything. But I was never getting like that push, that extra umph to make me that made me actually realize um, just some of my fitness goals. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Has have you found other people kind of say like the same things to you? Like as far as that extra push, that extra ump? Yeah, I think. Um, well, Kate, what are you seeing? I feel like what are you seeing from you know members or just like you want to you want to handle that one? Sure. Go yeah, ahead. I think that most of the time, people who have played any type of organized sport um whether it was in college or even in high school you it's a different experience when you have somebody telling you what to do Mm -hmm. essentially right and pushing you to pre-cure this pre-curated plan to like what the workout's going to be and then seeing other people do it together right like Mm -hmm. misery loves company exactly so even the best kind of misery right whether you're working out doing squats running a suicide doing a 17 like you know you're doing it you know you're competing Mm -hmm. um and it's just nice. And then also adding in the fact that all of our coaches played professionally or at that high collegiate level, they know what they're talking about. And our program is backed by sports performance science. And then also we've all done every single drill that our members are doing, we've done a hundred times. And so we know that it's possible. We know that you can get through it. We know how to make adjustments when needed. And I think that makes it even better than some of the other kind of programs that when you go out there, you know, you go to another boutique style gym and it's the same format. Like there's not really a lot of amendments that are made if Mm -hmm. needed, but you come to us, if you, you know, you struggled with a back issue, maybe you are working through, we have a member that's coming back from an ACL tear Mm -hmm. and they come back and we're able to kind of diversify the workout to be for them, but also in a group fitness type of way. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of our members enjoy that competitive edge that definitely comes to class too in a group setting. So you're not just competing against yourself. You're kind of competing against other people. It brings back that team, that camaraderie, um, and just the Hooper community. You 
got me. You piqued my interest again. I had to write down competing because that's like one of my favorite parts of the class is when we do the um, the shot competitions. Shooting contest. The game, yeah. ball. game ball. Buzzer beaters. Buzzer beaters. Yeah, all, yeah. all of them. Gotta use the right term, Seven. <laughs> I have to learn. I need yeah, to, all the branding. I need the, the seven dictionary. pillars of the Swish House Classics. <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah. Let, let's, let's hit me with those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to give you a, a, just a, another two things that's super relevant to this discussion. Okay. Of like, you know, of like your question about like just like pushing people in the class and just like how we've, we've structured it. Like we, we built Swish House as a, you know, solution for me personally, frankly, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. a fitness, a much needed fitness uh, solution for me. Cause after my playing career, I ballooned up to almost 250 pounds. I was like, you know, 195, 200 shredded shooting garden college that mm -hmm. dunk and get to the rack. And yeah, then I, all that fun I stuff. ballooned. Yeah. I got up to like, you know, like a lot of financial services, steak dinners and booze. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, just did not taking care of my body, a lot of travel. And like, I tried everything. I did like a couple half marathons with my wife. Mm -hmm. Awful. CrossFit <laughs> gym. I had a CrossFit gym across the street from my house in the West Loop and I couldn't get my ass to go there. And it was like uh, $200 a month. Cause it's just not, it wasn't for me. Like I tried spinning classes. I did everything, mm -hmm. man. Triathlon. Um, it's just, it's not me. And then what I found myself doing is like, I just like one of my boys and I would, would just like going down to the park in the West loop and just like getting shots up. And then I just was like, what if you like, I went to a title boxing class in okay. the West loop. And that's when I came up with the idea. I was like, if people are showing up to this, mm -hmm. how many people do you know have gotten in a ring and punched somebody in the face? Fireman, a lot. Probably a fireman. <laughs> like, yeah, you're probably the wrong dude to ask. But like, but, but the regular, people, like, yeah, my normal friends humans don't that, know anybody. That's I about to say my friends that aren't firemen, no. <laughs> yeah. box, I mean, compared to basketball, I mean, right, 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 right. Love the Bulls right. or love the Cavs. Yeah. You're a yep. one guy, right? Yep. So that's it, it, it. It's I knew that if like people are showing up to group fitness classes for non-mainstream sports like boxing, yeah. I just thought, God, like if you created something and you had like a badass running it, like mm -hmm. somebody that like hooped, that like when they do the demonstrations, like, oh, wow, like that person, that girl's in the, in the Illinois Hall of Fame. Yeah. Where, like, Trevor yeah. was like a borderline NBA player, yeah. you know, when he does yeah. the, the drill. So I, I knew that like I came at it from the most genuine angle possible. Like what the hell would I show up for like seven days a week? Mm -hmm. And then if, if you don't have to be like me, I was a pretty good hooper. Like what if you just like – made the eighth grade team and you love the bulls and you don't want to get on a treadmill that I knew that if, if you got it in a group setting, you had somebody like pushing people like, and you just made it like somewhat competitive. Like I think people would flock to it if we did it right. Mm -hmm. And that was the hardest part is like creating a fitness class for any fitness or skill level. Perfect example. We had a, a girl in class last week who's Iranian, barely speaks English and has mm -hmm. literally never set foot on a basketball court. Mm -hmm. And we had to adjust. <laughs> We had to adjust the class so hard for her to like, just to make sure that like she felt welcomed and that she, yeah. you know, didn't feel less than, you know, so, you know, her, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, cause yeah. there's three other dudes in the class that were like legit basketball players. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, so you had, we had to create something like for like the general population could do, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that actually took us, this is the thing I'm probably most proud of when it comes to the business is we actually took, a lot of people don't know this. We took a full like almost year and a half of like guinea pigging, like real members. Like mm -hmm. we were charging like 10 bucks a class at Mercy Home. It was enough money to pay Trevor Huffman like $5,000 in our first year of business. <laughs> but that was Trevor's salary. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. like 10 grand he made, we, we made in profit. We just gave it all to Trev. Mm -hmm. um, but that, like we truly like picked like 30 or 40 people like from our network to like be our earliest adopters. There's some people were ex-college hoopers down to like total novices, some people in their 50s, some people in their 20s. Mm -hmm. And we really, really, really like strive to make it like doable for like the general population of hoops junkies, mm -hmm. people that like hoops, not necessarily people who are good at basketball. Like you can't do like three-man weaves. Yeah, like that's, that's a that's, that's super simple if you played one. high school. <laughs> like that's the simplest drill in the world if you're like on your high school team. That's like how if I you've got never cut played as a basketball. Freshman. If you're an Iranian girl that's never played basketball, like yep. you're gonna be like, What? Yep. What is this? So you can do linear drills, you know, that yeah. are very simple and straightforward, but very yeah. challenging. But you're not a lot of like super hardcore basketball acumen in the classes, but that's all very deliberate. So that that like I said, that was my hardest drill, and I got cut not being able to do that drill because mm -hmm. when I when I was playing growing up, we would go to the playground yeah. and mm -hmm. just 
play all day. I remember one day I got out of school at three and I didn't get home to about 10 o'clock at night. And it was all good with my mother because she yeah. knew exactly where I was at. I was playing basketball. Yeah. And we weren't doing any drills like that. We was just hooping and staying on the court and see who could stay on the longest. So then when exactly. I tried out and I tried to do that three man weave, oh no, it was. Or, yeah, right. It was, it was bad. Yeah. So like so you we, said, yeah. don't put that in there. Yeah, <laughs> we, we had great. to keep the, so that's a, a good segue you'd ask, like kind of what is the, like the Switch yeah. House class experience. That's like our primary, um, our primary you know service that we offer our, our, our members, which is so there's there's seven parts to the class. Like it's the first part is called throwbacks. It's essentially it's basically just full court like shooting drills that are nostalgic. There's music playing. Members are going at about a fifty percent effort just to get their their heart rate up. Um, it, you know, just and and having a good time. It's a really good first impression. Mm -hmm. It also gives about five minutes of the coach running the class to b the ability to assess the talent in the class. Mm -hmm. Right? You can see because there's the the best parts. You just said the best parts of the class, which we'll get to, is the game ball and buzzer beaters. Those are the team shooting contest parts mm -hmm. of class, mm -hmm. and we really do a good job of like assessing talent in that first five minutes to make sure that like okay, there's like. Two, there's like four superstar basketball players, 10 regular Joes and Josies, and four people that are clearly novice, maybe somebody that's really, really out of shape, but mm -hmm. got a nice stroke, right? Mm -hmm. she, she can shoot a three, but she, he or she's having a hard time running up and down the court, right? Mm -hmm. So we assess the talent. Uh, that's throwbacks. It's just simple, ball in your hand, great music playing, getting up and down the court, getting, getting your heart rate up. The next part of the class was designed by our uh, sports performance uh, doctor on our on our investor team, Trent Salo. He's the uh, sports performance director of sports performance at the Detroit Pistons. Mm -hmm. He's also kind of known in the in the NBA circles as the guy that like rebuilt Derrick Rose's body. That's why we got him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he we we share a bunch of mutual connections in Michigan. He's from the same area as Trevor Huffman. We built uh, basically eight minutes of the class is injury prevention. So we spend time using mini bands, getting your ankles, your knees, your hips, and your shoulders properly warmed up. Those are the four areas of you know, most common injuries, your ankles, knees, hips, shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, just getting your basketball body to go really hard. And the next section of class, which is game ball, mm -hmm. team shooting contest, usually about 10 minutes spent on that. Um, we then usually break down a specific skill for five minutes. Like we always do a skill de development portion of class. We surveyed our members. We listened to our members and a lot of, you know, 30 year olds, like actually still want to get better at basketball, mm -hmm. um, or just sharpen a skill. So we may do some ball handling, maybe do some footwork drills. We may do some like a specific, like, you know, one-on-one -on -one move or something that we're, we're working on for five minutes, a skill breakdown. Uh, then we do what we call our Swish Lab. That's where each member, the members get a ton of variety. It's four stations. One's a cardio station called Locomotion. The other one's a core mobility station, kind of agility station um, called uh, Bulletproof. We then do a skill, more skill development in one station and um, a strength. We use these Viper Pros, which those cylinders, those can yeah. be really a grind. Love I'm those. Sure those are awesome. Heaviest one is the one all. Yeah, the, the 12 pounders <laughs> a grind. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a strength component. So you can definitely get shredded coming if you come to Swish House. Lot. There's a there's a good you know several minutes every class spent on strength. So basketball centric strength drills. So there's four stations, tons of variety, around eight or so minutes of stations, um, and then we finish with buzzer beaters, which mm -hmm. is more of more team shooting contests. Uh, we always let the you know, you know losing squad from game ball get a chance to kind of run it back. Yep. Um, there's always skin in the game. We have what we call the basketball burn part of class, which yep. probably your least favorite. That's like extra running, especially if you lose um, after our game ball. So it's it's seven parts of the class, but again, we we give the framework to all of our coaches. They have to go through a full online teachable course. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to do in-person uh, shadowing of coaches. They have to go through several classes as a member, mm -hmm. kind of get a vibe from like the member's perspective mm -hmm. of like what the class is about. So it's a very formal training. We don't just say, oh, hey, Steve played at Michigan. He can run Come a Swish hope. House. Like yeah. Mike Krzyzewski would have a hard time running a Swish House. Yes. If he had like a diverse 16-person class. No, he would. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a totally weird – it's not the same as coaching like an AAU team. Yeah. Right? Close. So – that's it's again. It's a very, very. We always say there's a ton of. It's built by a team of pros, but backed by science. It's great for your heart. We have you know the chief cardiologist at Duke University Health mm -hmm. uh, Services is on our our 
board of advisors for Swish House. Mm-hmm. So it's all about just a really, really, really killer workout where you burn 700, 1,000 calories in an hour without even realizing it because most of the time you're having a good time. There's It's a super grind, hard workout, but mm-hmm. it goes fast because there's a ton of like entertaining, fun It It does go that, quick. Um, and it's all – to say that we put a lot of thought and effort into it is the understatement of the year because we had to make it – a good time, but also like a killer workout. Well, like who's responsible for the website? Uh, like a firm called Color Jar. Well, it's good. Uh, I'm, our, I'm not saying because yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's good. And it explains what yeah, you yeah. said perfectly. My favorite But we, we as the owners pretty much wrote almost every word. Yeah, I can, I mean, I they, can tell. We, one of our founders is a guy, uh, David Gardner, who's you know played professionally, played in Dartmouth in the Ivy League. Brilliant guy. He mm-hmm. owns a branding firm here in the city. Um He's done, you know, like Let Us Entertain You's a big client. It yep. is to okay. Navy Pier. He did their rebrand mm-hmm. and Swish Out, <laughs> you know, and several other like companies. But really, they've helped us kind of pull out. They've kind of helped pull out the verbiage and kind of our brand identity. Mm-hmm. Of a ton of, you know, theirs call it scientific elements to kind of designing a brand. We've been really, really thoughtful about that. So well, that's the, the company that's helped. The part I was going to say did, that they I like did the logo, which is really badass. The logo was my initial. So yeah, I, I, that's, yeah, yeah. that's why I rock it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the stretching, the stretch part is, is really Injury good. Prevention. Yep. With yeah, the, yeah. with the, with the bands, I, um, it made me buy some bands for myself for at yeah. home stuff. Cause I really, I really appreciate the bands. And then the other thing I, I got to get this off before I forget. Um, in the competition, it's this one guy I'm looking for, and I can't find him in no more classes. I think he just came once. But he was on a team that beat a team I was on, a tic-tac-toe, and he did the Steph Curry sleep thing, and I don't think he made one shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And so now I'm looking for that dude. And, like, you know how sometimes in the class – well, even with just regular pickup, you kind of gravitate gravitate towards people you know. Like, yeah, oh course. yeah, I know if I pass this dude with the ball, he'd get a shot or a layup, or he'd pass me back. So you get to that kind of in Swish House, and um, if I see this dude, I'm gonna go to the other side of the court just to make sure I'm not on his team on purpose <laughs> because I'm looking for that dude. I love it. I don't even like I said, I only saw him one time, and it was here at this building too. So. <laughs> Got a lot of transients here. Yeah. A lot of people from out of town like just come to catch a class. So he could, dude, could live in, you know. Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm looking for him. Um, <laughs> when, when I, when I go out of town, I'm planning on going to New York pretty soon, and um, Detroit as well. I'm gonna look for a Swish House class. Yeah, yeah for sure. we'll hook you up. Um, let's see. So I talked about my favorite stuff, but you guys, Caitlin, because you, I want you to talk more. <laughs> What's your favorite part of the whole Swish House experience? Yeah, I think one thing that, I mean, I love our class structure. So the seven pillars that Jonathan was just talking about. Um, and I think I 100% agree. We do a really great job of novice basketball player to someone who played in college, mm-hmm. to someone who is just looking to get back in shape. One In addition to that, another thing I think that we do really well is um, diversify are offerings and we're going to do this a little bit more in the new year Mm -hmm. in regards to you know some people that want a little bit more focused Mm -hmm. skill development for example was not is more of a a new pillar that was added i would say in the past year Mm -hmm. uh, to our class experience because we heard our members saying hey i want to get better Mm -hmm. I'm not just here for a workout. I'm here for a really hard workout. I want to burn a thousand calories and I want to improve my game. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that can be difficult in a class that has a very diverse range of athletes. Right. But so what we did was we created a skills, a skills clinic that is more of a little bit shorter condensed version of class. It's 45 minutes Mm -hmm. and it's more focused on straight basketball skills. Still going to get a good workout in, but you're working on more tight ball handling, spin moves, getting down the post. You know, you're, you're doing things that then you can take and apply in a pickup scenario mm-hmm. if you are still interested in playing competitively mm-hmm. um, or going to the park and playing with your friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and then similar to that, shooting clinics. So people who primarily want to go get shots up. You know, mm-hmm. there are some people that don't want to use Vipers. They, there are some people that don't want to um, – that only want to play pickup. But mm-hmm. in order to play pickup, if you want to really compete, you got to get reps up. And yeah. one of the best things, you know, when I was growing up is, you know, your coach is always like, you got to get a thousand shots up a day. Mm-hmm. So you go in the gym and you have the shooting gun, right? You have that privilege in college of having a shooting gun that rebounds for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you don't have that, you know, in the, your adult life, <laughs> unless maybe you're a millionaire yeah. and your own private court. <laughs> but so in a shooting clinic, we keep those groups really small, you know, four to six people max. And the whole goal is getting reps up. So people are getting 500 reps up whilst getting a good um, workout and everything is game-like mm -hmm. in that scenario. So then they can directly take that to one of our pickup games or something around the city and continue to compete. So I guess that's one of my favorite parts is being able to continue to evolve our product yeah. and evolve our class experience to meeting the diverse people that we see come in and hearing the feedback that we're getting um, over time. I heard one guy, um, we were doing a skill development thing, and the coach was like, you guys want to do a dribble, dri a dribble drill or a shot drill? And the guy was like, it's called Swish House, not Dribble House. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm funny. like, yeah, I'm with that guy. Um, one of the things you guys allowed me to do early in the year is write a little blog article um, on sure. you guys and how much I appreciated and liked Swish House. And like you said, if, if a boutique niche, if you can go get punched in the face um, mm -hmm. and sign up to get punched in the face, <laughs> you may as well sign up to go get some shots up. And, and yeah. the thing that I think that you found great, because, you know, you got your big three and your big three sports and then hockey, if you want to add it, is, you know, the team aspect of everything and how you've mm -hmm. taken it so that, just the average lay person, anybody from – if you can run, you can do – You can do a swish you can do a swish house class. You can miss every shot and get the same workout. Yeah, exactly. You can miss – I have missed every <laughs> shot. And <laughs> mad at myself the rest of the day. But still, I, I look at my watch, I look at my whoop and see that I burned 600, 700 calories. Yep. And then I feel like I can treat myself with a cupcake. But that's not necessarily <laughs> the best that's thing right. to do. Um. So, but I say all that to say you guys have found a ideal and perfect, to me, vehicle for people to get into shape. And the other thing that I appreciate and I just would like you to talk about just a bit more Please. is – locations um mm -hmm. like you said in chicago you have seven locations and they go all over the place mm -hmm. i heard you one day saying that we want to take courts that aren't utilized as mm -hmm. much and bring them to yeah. the forefront yep so how is that going like is there mm -hmm. anything that anyone can do to make that easier for you guys this wow great question um it's i always say there's like there's four ways I explain the business. Like at the top of everything, it's like we have these this great services, like our you know, the, the classes, the pickup, the events that we can do, mm -hmm. and just bringing people together. That's that's the most important thing is we exist to serve our members. But in order to execute the business, you need great leaders. We work to find great lo locations to activate together, and then we market the business to people who dig hoops. Mm -hmm. you know? um, the facilities piece is, I would say, if there is a challenge of Swish House, that's the hardest piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, also, I would sprinkle in like the last two years in America have been the weirdest yeah, two yeah, years yeah. in the history of mankind to probably build yes. a fitness company. <laughs> yes. Especially right. Around one, the world, I think. Especially around ones, that, ones yeah. that operate out of like schools and nonprofits. Yes. Um, so that has been the hardest part. However, if you really break it down, like we have proven that the, the, the facilities piece of Swish House, like... We kind of almost say it's like Airbnb for basketball. Right? Mm -hmm. Take an underutilized mm -hmm. asset and turn it into an operational business. And that can be the bougiest court on planet Earth upstairs here yep. at 167 Green to a Catholic nonprofit down the street at Mercy to a little further down the street, a park district where you, you catch the, yep. the morning workouts with me on Fridays at Sheridan Park. Great, you know, public entity yep. uh, park district. So we now have a partnership with Chicago Public Parks, which is a big deal. That's that can, awesome. It's going to open up doors at other... There's a lot of really solid courts. I've played it. I, I actually researched all of the basketball courts within the Chicago Park District when I started the company. Mm -hmm. And there's so many really great courts that we can utilize within the parks if we need it. So the point is, it's worked at non and it's, then it's two Catholic schools, two a privately owned just you know for-profit facility in Brooklyn that we operate out of that's mm -hmm. got like four courts, and we kind of own the rights to one of them 20 hours a week there in Brooklyn, right? So. Mm -hmm. It technically is working, um, but it's the most challenging piece. Our vision, uh, to answer your question, is like that's something in 2023 that we're gonna tr we're aiming to kind of reverse engineer. We have a an actual process that we're following where we've we've learned that like in order to what constitutes a swish house location is like that institution, be it public park, Catholic school, privately owned facility, nonprofit, whatever. Mm -hmm they have to have a minimum of 10 hours of weekly court time 
year round that they can give us. So I could, I, 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 as we really spread the gospel on Swish House long term, like that's the piece of the business that I want to kind of reverse engineer so that those entities are calling us. Yes. We actually had to hire a young, like, like a stud, this guy, Brian Daly, that works for us here in Chicago. Like mm-hmm. he's got a real estate background. He played at St. Louis University. He's just, he's an animal. Like he, he created this like database and he's like cold called like every Catholic school, every public school, every like nonprofit that. You know, it's got a dope court in in this city, and he's going. We're going to apply it to New York soon too. But the goal is that we we because you know, the, the, we the the pitch that we provide those facilities, it's kind of a we, there's four pillars to it, and they can kind of like dial up or dial down what we provide them. But at the simplest form, it's just like right now your court is sitting empty for huge swaths of the week. Mm-hmm. We've done our due diligence; it's in a good neighborhood. We found, you know, we've met one of your board members at the school, like, and we know the athletic director. Mm -hmm. So we get it in there and we go in there and we say, all you have to do is give us the keys, literally hand us over the keys or Mm -hmm. like the ability to get into the gym 10 hours a week, year round. We strike a contract Mm -hmm. and it can be a a combination of just consistent. And we've basically made a market. Like we know, like, like Green Street could charge us $300 an hour for this court. They don't. Yeah, yeah, But like. Something like this is a complete like unicorn, but like a solid court hardwood in Wicker Park, like that's a fifty year old gymnasium. That's mm. like you know, let's just say like we'll pay fifty dollars for that or something. Mm. Like so, we'll say we'll give you a fixed you know few thousand bucks a month year round. So like literally to give you give us the keys, you're getting like forty grand. Yeah, when you were at a, at a down at a Catholic school, and yeah. I, I'm Catholic, so is Caitlin. Like yeah. most Catholic schools. Uh, operate off of fundraising so yeah. like getting like 40 grand for nothing is, n- is certainly that's like that's in and of itself could be could get us the deal but then we sprinkle in and we say you know at this you know catholic school we're looking at in chicago we're gonna how about we run four clinics for your girls at this catholic high school mm-hmm. uh, run by caitlin and Kristen heidloff mm-hmm. how about that we do we, we put on free clinics a few times a year bring, you know, those families together. How about we do a three on three tournament or a three point shooting contest there for the month of April and raise 10 grand for your school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We've done that before too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the, even probably the, some of the biggest reasons that people give us the keys to their gym is like, we put our social media to work for them. And we say, Hey, look, mm-hmm. our Wicker park location is this Catholic high school that no one knows about. Now, yeah. People are like coming in there every week, catching a run, catching a workout. And like, they might send their daughter there or they might like donate to the cause. Like some like wealthy cat comes through and like strokes a check to them. Like that's like, or like the Catholic school that we operate out on the gold coast, like, like t- 10 members that started sending their kids, kids to there. Right? Yeah. Cause it's a great school. Right. So it's, it's, it's a combo of like, you know, money, programming, fundraising, and social media marketing support. Mm-hmm. So we're trying, and I don't mean this disparagingly, but we're trying to make it so that like, you have to be like dumb, yeah, to say to no, not, to say no. To <laughs> yeah, you're like, exactly. well, I don't know if we want to. Yeah, there could be some liability. Then we come in and say, well, the company's got millions of dollars in, in liability insurance. Yeah, you know, all you know, every single member signs a waiver. You know, God forbid somebody like falls over and like you know keels over and gets got hurt ADs or something. And like, every every location I've been call nine one one. Yep, and like God forbid somebody comes in and like vandalizes your school like hmm, so she also pay for it yeah it's in the in, in, insurance program so we have that is the piece that long term like our, our my hope is that like people are like hey man we want we want to bring switch house to toledo to this location or we want to bring switch house to cincinnati or yeah. you know whatever I think we've seen that too to just kind it's of starting to, on that. It's starting, to happen starting to happen with uh different gyms and different partners especially on like the south side of chicago with that's what i would sports. yeah um, Rim on my and yeah. um just different organizations. So, you know, cl- people that are opening new gyms and facilities, I think we're starting to have a lot of those conversations. It's like, hey, we're going to open this building in Fort Wayne, for example, right? Yeah. We're mm-hmm. opening exactly. this court. We're going to have f- three or four different court spaces. We want to dedicate court number one to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to run, we'll bring in somebody, bring in a GM, have them host and launch it. So then now what we're seeing is like when they start marketing their building and when we partner with them to market on our own platform, now this building is getting even ahead of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Like they're, and they have an anchor, t- like an anchor tenant, if you will. Right. Like, like, so we're getting hit up, can, you know, so it's, it's really, that's the, like, if there's one, like, call it problem that still kind of sort of needs to be solved at scale, it's mm-hmm. that. But I think if we, if we, we have some ideas on how we can like really market that to just like, imagine like, there's just like business to business marketing now, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Where we're like, we're trying, you know, 
there's a, there's something really big with that. Um, no question, because the, the way I see this working is like, then you just find like great, we build a database of great people that want to open swish houses, like that want to be an entrepreneur yeah, or who are entrepreneurs that want to, you know, own a basketball fitness company in their hometown, their college town, maybe an ex NBA player in the pro town they played in. Yeah. Put their name behind it, find leaders to run it, and it's a wonderful thing. Yes. And we've been hit up for that multiple times. It's right now we're in just in the planning, like, let's, how do we replicate what we've built so well here in Chicago and in New York? Mm-hmm. How do we replicate that so when we do open in Toledo, we do open in San Diego, we do open in Austin, Texas? Because these are all people, we get people that, inquiries all the time. Hey, nice. when are you guys coming yeah. here? When are you guys coming here? Or, Hey, I'm interested in, in opening a switch house. How do I do it? Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that we're setting those people up for the most amount of success through having kind of these like HQ standards to franchise. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. And we've learned too, like, um, very intentional, like the, the types of gyms that we choose. Like, yeah. for example, there are some park districts that have gyms where there's two courts and there could be like a circus of children running around on the one court with like candy and like (laughs) weird music going or something. And then like, we've learned like, we can't operate out of a place that's got like, you know, something else going on right next to it. Like, so Sheridan park, like you go in there, you go up the stairs. It's just like in its own own world. So we, we are very, very much about the experience, like controlling the experience Yeah. so that there's not like weird distractions going on. You know what I mean? So there's, there's a model for it that we've, We've kind of learned like where it doesn't work. We've learned that, you know, where we don't want to operate out of, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like there has to be somebody that's like a true leader that's like in charge of like our relationship there and making sure that the staffing's there. Like there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to make sure that a Catholic school in the Gold Coast is open on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. It's not rocket science, but we have to pay like some place we have to pay like an armed off-duty cop, right? To kind of watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we've now built a debt. We have like, access to like a monster network of Chicago PD database yeah, for a that few buddies on the force. And cool. that's how those guys make side hustle money yeah. and gals. Right? Exactly. Um, anyway, so we're figuring it out. <laughs> You're doing an excellent job at it. Um, one, uh, two things kind of that I wanted to touch on before we get going. Um, the culture of basketball itself, mm-hmm. you've like really embraced that uh, with the music, with the, 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 how we play the game, how just all the drills and everything other than trial and error. And I guess I'm kind of asking, was that like an accident or is that just, just because you know, hoops, that culture was just brought into it automatically. Because reason I say that is because attending some of the switch house classes and, and to tie it in the commercial that you guys just did um, when you had the video shot. Oh yeah. The really, the, the, the one upstairs. It's like a movie. It's a full movie. Well, yeah, we're having really talented content. Class it's yeah. It's like a movie. Found. So the culture and that commercial is like yeah. a movie. Did yeah. you kind of just stumble into it or is it something just kind of explain yeah. that to you me. Wanna, you want to take that first? You want me to answer? Uh, sure. I mean, I can, I mean, I think it's, when we come together, kind of like as an HQ team, we we recently, I think, when was our meeting? Like back August. In, August, in August, we wrote down like, what are the key words to basketball culture? What are the key things that are visual that you see? What are the things that you hear when you think about basketball? Or what do you feel? And so I think we're intentionally tapping in to basketball culture across a variety of demographics across mm-hmm. different cities, um, across different levels of play. Like what does basketball culture mean for someone who never, never played basketball but l- is an avid Bulls watcher mm-hmm. to someone who played at a really high level um, who just likes to play. Maybe they don't even watch basketball, but they just like to play. Mm-hmm. How do you sm- like mirror, make those experiences really intentional for them? Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, I mean, music is everything. You can't go to a Swish House class. No one wants to work out to like classical to nothing. music, yes. right? <laughs> like so to come in at, or like even just like slow rock. Yeah. But in different parts of the class, there might be an appropriate time for that, right? You're doing throwbacks. You want to like kind of get that energy pumping, but come 3D warmups. Like I've heard Zeke Linton play Solange, yeah. right? Or like yeah. Mary J. Blige and you yeah. just like vibe and while you stretch and then you kind of crank it back up. So the music experience kind of tying everything that you're doing back to, you know, what Curry's doing on the court mm-hmm. or what you're seeing um, James Harden do, right? Like tying it back to Candace Walker, like just knowing those things makes the whole experience way better. Um, 
so that's kind of my take on it, but I'm sure you have more. Sure. Oh, that's, that's, that's nail on the head. Um, I, I would say like it has been a, a series of trial and error, like the, the, the evolution of our brand um, kind of started with like in the early days, you know, again, I would say like what we're doing isn't rocket science, but mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's really, really well thought out in that like we were the first cats to like put together, like we always say like our website, all of our branding, like we're the first basketball fitness mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. um, so in the early days, we had to be really um, literal in our marketing in that mm -hmm. like this is not a league. Mm -hmm. Like we had to actually say, and if you look at like the early parts of our website and social media, like we would lit in like the like like the preamble, the Just website, like it. there's no five on five, there's no one on one. This is not a pickup game or a league. It is a basketball fitness class. We use like basketball hit class. We were trying to, so mm -hmm. we landed on basketball fitness class. We've kind of iterated on group basketball workout, basketball workout class. We've landed on basketball fitness class. We're, that's what we're running. Perfect. With. Yeah. Um, it just, it's descriptive. So we had to be really, really literal, but then we kind of took it too far. Mm -hmm. And like, we, we all kind of is like, all of the owners and coaches, like we kind of were looking at our website and our social, and we're like, this kind of doesn't, this isn't us. This isn't like mm -hmm. true basketball culture. It's too kind of fitnessy and too kind of like a mm -hmm. little bit, not corny. I don't know what the right word is, but it was just like, this isn't, this, that's not me. This yeah. isn't like Swish House. Yeah. This is like, it's a little too literal. So then we had to like say, all right, how do we really bit. strike that balance? And it was kind of like, oddly like, was synced up with when we decided to, as Caitlin mentioned, like the original name of Swish House was Hoops Link, and it was an or it was a like an app where you could find pickup runs. Mm -hmm. That's like a whole other long story I won't <laughs> bore you with. But that we changed the brand. We decided to go all in on fitness classes, and then we we're like, we can always come back to like any not like hosting a pickup game is not that hard. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. I still but do it. So, it's still yeah. a business. You're yeah. still like running. So, so like it it, it kind of intersected with the same time we decided to start reinstituting pickup games into mm -hmm. the business mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. it's we really have been thoughtful about um we've we invested in like badass content creators like you you, you get what you pay for mm -hmm. when it comes to like photographers and film cats <laughs> you know like the we've had movie makers and we've had like aspiring like you know person taking a pick of photography class who yeah. is not very good you yeah. know what i mean and everything in between and so it's we've really like said we like kind of when we think of our brand it's like Everything starts with basketball. Everything starts mm -hmm. with like the deepest, deepest roots of basketball culture, mm -hmm. um, and like massaging fitness into it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so we really had to like figure out like everything starts with basketball culture. But we're the first to tie like basketball deep rooted culture to health and wellness. Like, yeah. When I when it's all said and done, like we want to be known for like the people who helped millions of people like get mentally and physically healthier through basketball and not by like showing up to a park and running around in a bad pickup game. Yeah, no. Which is what happens unfortunately in a lot of like fitness, you know. And if you if you export, like I said if you don't win, I started the company oh because God. of how shitty the ones are at export <laughs> yes. in Old Town. Yeah. Yeah, at Old Town. That's, That's the true. one like, I used to go to. If I had to, to give to. you like the true origin story of Swish House, like yeah. I graduated college was like a 1500 point point score, two NCAA tournaments, mm -hmm. moved to Chicago, I didn't know anybody and I just started going to like the gym down the street and I wanted to like it was the worst experience ever. Like, like a bunch of like, and, and it's like the dorks dudes who don't there, know how to are, play basketball. Well, they Nobody's all know each other I'm already. Like, I'm the best player on the court. And like, yep. I'm just standing here. This mm -hmm. is stupid. You don't get no right, shots. And then if you that. pass, don't ever expect <laughs> to see the ball back. Yeah. Everybody it's, thinks it's just Steph gone. Curry at export. Yes. Yeah. Well, and even in our pickup, I think we've like changed it so it's not like you're not getting the same experience at mm. an export or this like when people are like, well, why would I come play pickup at Swish House versus and and pay to play. And I can go to my local gym, and I'm like, let me we'll tell, tell you, you why. We'll yeah. tell you why. Because you know exactly how many runs you're going to get in. Because we're going to cap the games at 12 minutes, or you're going to play best to 11. So yeah. it's like hard quality basketball. Don't if you're walking up and down the court not playing defense, you're going to be the first you're one. You're getting yanked. No, you're yeah. getting yanked. Yeah. It's, Our coaches yeah. talk about like, hey, this like there's an opening and there's an there's a, like a opening. Hey, welcome. Thanks for being here let's get after it. These are kind of like the rules, like mm -hmm. the kind of the structure. And then at the end, there's like, hey, everyone, thanks for coming. Saw really great passing. You did really great at blah, blah, blah. blah. Like things are being called out. Mm -hmm. And then also a lot of the times our coaches will c capture video content. Mm -hmm. 
you don't want to be the one on video. Not doing nothing. Getting Cherry picking, yeah. getting smoked, right? So a hundred percent. It's it's um we're we're re and you know, I, I love saying this too. Like I um for two thousand eight through twenty fourteen, I ran one of the best pickup runs in the city of Chicago, like all invite only, all ex pro college players. So mm -hmm. like I had experience actually doing this and mm -hmm. I it's a really interesting like you know, call it sociology study or psychology study or whatever the right term is on mm -hmm. humans that love basketball. Like you throw jerseys on with a ref, mm -hmm. grown men with families and grown <laughs> women with families turn into lunatics. People start beefing. Yeah. There's, I've seen my, yeah. I've seen multiple friends like get their faces blown up and like fights in the alley after, after like a Chicago sport and social club league. I got one yeah. of my boys got arrested for like, <laughs> Assaulting like a referee is no, no joke. <laughs> True story. It's actually that we should do a podcast on that story, actually. Um, but it's it, it, what we I always kind of say like the staff member that's at Swish House, like this guy Brandon, who runs a lot of our pickup for us. Mm. He it, it, it's the whole point. It's like they're oftentimes the coach will play in the run. Yeah, a B, it's like they're a host, but they're also like a bouncer, mm -hmm. and they're also just like, hey, if you're if you're there's no assholes allowed, if you're if you're talking too much shit or if you're hogging the ball, like you're going to get called out. Mm -hmm. Like we don't tolerate like a holes on any level. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, I've always found like, and we've never had one incident, not one incident. And that's Whereas great. You, I'm telling yeah. you, you go to like a sport and social club game mm -hmm. on Wednesday night, it, the craziest shit you've ever seen happens just because there's refs yeah. and there's jerseys and there's like free throws and fouls. It's just, it's. Or even whereas, like your local gym partner, right? People are just going and there's no, and there's, there's no, no structure. Control. There's no yeah. quality control over that. So like, Somebody calls if you call your own fouls. Well, I didn't foul you, yeah. right? Like it's just yeah. there's no respect, and I think that's the biggest part of Swish House is that everybody that comes to a Swish House class pick up. You're really driving that community, and there's a lot of respect, and that starts in our Halo group. That starts with our community. yep. No, people it does. Serving, yeah, people you are can't talking. People bitch crazy about the price. In there. That's another yep. thing. Is like you want to. It's it's a very simple. You get what you pay for. You want to go play in a eight dollar run? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. That ain't Swish House. Like, you're coming here, it's going to be $15. And if yeah. you're complaining about $15, look, we're as sensitive to socioeconomic struggles as anybody. Like, if, if it's just, you know, talk to us. We want to make it right. you know, doable for you. We'll work with you, like, if you can't afford it. Like, but look, man, like, it ain't eight dollars. Like yeah. you don't, you can't get a gymnasium in the Gold Coast and charge eight dollars for a and expect to get and expect to like. We're not in the business of losing money at Swish House, so it's like we're very. It's twenty five bucks if you want to catch a run up here. Mm -hmm. That's the reason because you're playing on like the coolest basketball court on planet Earth. Yeah, but you're also playing for two hours. It's exactly. dedicated court time, so you don't have to worry about. And we cap our runs. At and like you said, you everybody get the run. That's the that's the thing because sometimes you know if you catch that wave, you're on a good team, you run forever. Sometimes you catch that wave when you on a bad team it's one and done so yeah but you're guaranteed yep. playing. so it's we've been very thoughtful about it caitlin has really led the development of like the the pickup experience because it's it is it's it it has to be a good experience and and that i think is it's it's worth the additional five to ten bucks because of the guaranteed good experience you're getting i, I want to plug agree. our women's run too like i think a lot of times pickup is and if you played at a high competitive level. I think after college, women don't tend to play as mm -hmm. much sometimes because they are, they don't, maybe don't want to play with men. Mm -hmm. So we have created a female identifying or trans non-binary. There's a whole separate group mm -hmm. for these people that might not feel comfortable traditionally, right? Going to their local gym and just hopping on the court. There's a lot of different kind of logistics there, but I accidentally signed up for the women's run, and then I read it. I said, "Oh, this is not for me." Sorry. <laughs> you, I, mean, you I am not a woman. <laughs> yeah, that's a but there was a lot of demand. Like we weren't seeing a lot of women come to switch house classes. To break, yeah. Changed. Women like to work out with other women, I think, and that's yes. kind yeah. of fair. And so we've kind of curated those experiences too, particularly. And we've had, uh, if we've had. 10 women's runs, I've never once had to be like, who's coming tonight? Like that that's filled. That's filled up. Week. Yeah. No. People just love the kind of the community there. So it's um, like that. something on that too. This is very, I think important to note. Like I hope that listeners hear this. Like it, it, it um, I have learned in starting this company, like the, the levels of uh, sexism that women have faced when it comes to basketball over the years of like punk men who think they're like Steph Curry. Yeah. That, like, 
you know, mm-hmm. if a, if a you know, super talented, like star collegiate hooper, you know, group of females go to like a pickup run at, you know, oh, they name the gym, them. They like they, they often break. won't get picked up or they have a yeah. bad experience. They're not touching the ball. Like it's just, they're, they're, you know, men have done this over the years and we're trying to solve for that to mm-hmm. just like really elevate the women's game, the WNBA. And like, mm-hmm. I have learned like firsthand how badass like, so many of the women that we play that are part of Switch House are at basketball. Like, I've had to guard Kristen Heidloff. It's not fun. Not she's yeah. super fast. Yes, she <laughs> is. Like, super quick. And I'm, yeah. you know, like she. So I like the more and for whatever reason, like our our members. It's probably eighty five fifteen men versus women. Mm-hmm. It's not because we don't try, but like that's an element. Like we're really trying to grow the the women population of Switch House. Just. You know, not just leaders that run the business and you know, lead the classes, but just as members. Just cause, but I think it's also because like there's a lot of boutique fitness that caters, yeah, more females. I think that's yeah, yeah. that's sure. a reason. But sure. we're truly really trying to like do as much as we can to like make that just you know the norm of of, of like men and women playing together and you know yeah. just respecting the women's game way way more, man. Because that's a it's an issue that. I've learned a lot of my friends, including Caitlin, have mentioned it's like hard. It's hard to, for you know, good men hoopers to find good runs. It's like yeah. probably five times harder for women. So it's like the more we can solve for that, the better. It's like um, if you took probably the women just from your run here, and like you wouldn't even have to dress them up. But you know how people usually put on the costumes, like Kyrie Irving a few years ago. We mm-hmm. put on the old man costume, yeah, yeah, go yeah. to the park and cut everybody up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could probably take that women's run and take them to the export that one in old Plus time, everybody's and out. they would ki- destroy the entire court, yes, no 100%, question. Hundred percent. And uh, it's, it's what I always used thing. to say, um, especially about women's basketball, is if you want your kid, especially a lot of guys want their sons to be good, force them to watch women's basketball yes. mm-hmm. because it's so fundamentally sound. I mean, if you can start just from there. It's a different game. It's a di- it's, it's, different it's game. entirely different game. I played um we played the FIBA 3 on 3 with Chris Kristen one time. It was me, her and one other guy and Oh my God! You want to talk about a workout? We were just running Bonkers. and running and running. Like you don't even take the ball out and look at each other. You just yeah. <laughs> take yeah. the like, oh, that's a live ball. And she was just calling it all out the whole yeah. time we were playing. And yeah, I, yeah. I think I burned twelve hundred calories that day. Mm-hmm. But uh, so we've been here for about an hour, and I won't um, force you. I won't force any more questions on you guys. Cause, <laughs> But you, you guys have been great at answering everything that I have on my mind. Um, I'm sure it's some, uh, once I'm done, I'm gonna say, "Oh, I meant to ask him that," and every, but that's okay. I know where know where you work at, so I just come and ask you it. anyway. <laughs> um, besides that, was there anything else that we didn't touch on that you guys would like to hit or talk about? Uh, absolutely, I would say the the next phase. Um, two really exciting things that we're considering is. Um, we have kind of stumbled into an opportunity to to bring Swish House to uh, within. There's a there's this incredible new like sixty million dollar facility going into the North Austin Belmont Craigan neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's 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 a rough community around there. You know, oh, what I, mean? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a tough part of town, but th- it's a it's an organization that um, their vision is to bring super high level sports to people who currently don't have access to it in neighborhoods mm-hmm. that they, they don't have access to convenient, really high level sports. So we have always had this idea of bringing Swish House to underserved communities, leveraging like, you know, the money we have access to, the connections, the corporate connections we have access to, the NBA connections and WNBA connections we have access to mm-hmm. through our leadership team and uh, bringing basically a health and wellness solution to underserved communities. I mean, obviously in Chicago, people talk a lot about the the violence. The other big f- fat problem, pun intended, is people in, you know, small rural areas of the country that I grew up in and inner cities, it's it's heart health. Your it's obesity. Diabetes, yep. obesity. No good and, food. Oh, food by the way, deserts, people love food yep. deserts. People love basketball. Yep. In the inner city. People love basketball in you know rural in country, rural Ohio country. where I grew up, where there's, you know, some, you know, a lot of poverty as well, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, um, so bringing Swish House to an underserved uh, part of Chicago is a big, big plan that we're, we're going to try to tackle next year um, and leveraging every resource. Because that, to me, is the coolest thing that we could do, I think, is, you know, it's nice to help, you know, people with, 
means become mm. physically and mentally healthier, but yeah. I think it's even more special to like help people who, you know, don't have an option. Right. So like, you know, we could, I can envision having like a corporate sponsor donate, you know, $50,000 to enable 300 local residents to get yeah. year round Swish House memberships. The, the, Something along those lines um, is a big deal to us. So that's where I started my career was in the Austin neighborhood. Well, oh, my wow. career in Chicago was over in the Austin neighborhood. And I love that you're, you're saying that and you're doing that. One of the things that a lot of those people in a lot of those situations don't, well, they don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't even know that these type of things exist. Right. Um, they, you know, you can see a little bit of basketball on TV. You can see, um, you know, you know it exists and everything, but using basketball as a vehicle to get healthy mentally and physically, mm-hmm. I don't think that sometimes people don't even know that that is yep. an option. So that's that's absolutely wonderful. That's yeah. Cool. So that's a big big initiative, and then we're um, because of the six. Um, the, we we are also considering um, in you know eight to ten major U.S. cities, starting with Chicago, of having our own flagship HQ facility. Um, we had our own little small facility that was branded in Pilsen. It was within an indoor soccer complex. Mm-hmm. We don't use it anymore. Um, they ended up selling to a different soccer organization. Didn't care to have a small basketball court. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've experimented with that before. In a not you know in a in a facility that wasn't ideal in a location that probably wasn't ideal and it worked just having our own like HQ uh, kind of a hub and spoke model where you have like an HQ really really like sexy facility that's branded yeah. hardwood courts you know maybe a lounge locker rooms you know like we're 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 thinking of building our own like maybe our own version of the Green Street we don't unfortunately own this thing upstairs mm-hmm. it's like the most amazing event space in the city of Chicago that happens to also be like a yeah, really badass basketball Yeah, kicked court. out for Obama. You, yeah, you know, Obama comes <laughs> through. He said, I'm Bieber, coming through. Y'all got to you know. go. Uh, <laughs> so that um, we're, we're, we're thinking through, um, and that's where having, you know, Dave Holtzmiller, who's the, the you know, the co-founder of the company. He's also like a really uh, high-level real estate attorney and investor. So having somebody with a real estate background and striking a right deal. Mm-hmm. You know, so we, may, you, you know, in a couple of years, we may have our own like, our own, you know, really nice headquarters and then still using that facilities activation model is like the spoke. So like HQ in 10 major cities and yeah. in those facilities, like they'll, we'll sell premium memberships. We'll do a lot of like our monster events there, corporate events, and then, you know, sell premium memberships to those, you know, call it almost like a Soho house for the basketball community. I can, I can That's definitely the see that in um, right city to do it. Not fit, not, not fully baked yet, but that's definitely something we're considering. But the, um, Going into underserved communities is definitely something we're going to do in 2023. I'm with that. How to tackle it, we'll figure it out. I think it'll be, but yeah. there's no question people love basketball. And uh, I don't. I think people would gravitate towards Swish House before they would any other boutique fitness that would try to go into those neighborhoods. I agree. Because, I, it's, basketball. I, it, because it's basketball. Yeah. I 1,000% I agree. You like the, the thing that's like race wise, you got black people, white people, Indian people, Asian people. Every person I have seen every person mm-hmm. at a Swish House class. It's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Every person. I, I, yeah. I say this. I say this regularly. Like especially if it's like a new member or if like a we have like a new coach or something. Mm-hmm. I've been. I, I could see. I could say, without question, just is just like off the top of my head. I've been. I've seen a hundred Swish House classes where there was not a white person in it. Yeah. And I. I that might not matter to some people, but mm-hmm. to to us, like. The fact that like there's nothing that brings people together like sports, but like, like yeah. basketball yep. is the ultimate. No matter your socioeconomic, your race, your religious Gender. backgrounds, yep. like basketball is the reason that I have that I understand at least to some extent black culture. It's the reason I know Islamic people. It's mm-hmm. the reason I have traveled mm-hmm. the world, um, and it's all because of basketball. Man. And I don't think you can say that the same with other boutique style fitness class. No. I think bo- oftentimes boutique style fitness, For just rich like that. white folks. <laughs> All, yes, it, 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 won't say yeah. it, no, that, 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 I, would, I, I was going to say, say yeah. it. for wealthy, <laughs> yes, it is for wealthy. Yeah. And I think yeah. that one, right. the, one right. of the biggest things and definitely something that we are constantly having conversations on is how do we ensure that Swish House is consistently an equitable company Mm -hmm. and how do we ensure that we are reaching different demographics how do we ensure that even from our membership prices like we have people that 
the, for example, the wage gap between women and men. Mm -hmm. Just really simple, right? Women make 85 cents to the dollar. So therefore, because of that, our women's runs are a little bit ch cheaper mm -hmm. than our men's runs for, for that reason. Yeah. And same with going when we do decide to go into the Austin community or to the different kind of neighborhoods of Chicago. If we have somebody that comes in and is like, hey, I really want to join, but this is my financial situation or mm -hmm. hey i'm in between jobs like we're constantly we're a member centric it's one of our biggest values is mm -hmm. the members first mm -hmm. is creating different creative situations to ensure that they can still play with us that they can still be a part of our community and we're constantly having those conversations internally and with our members too so it's well. um it's it's an it's another reason too like our our, our fees aren't nearly what a lot of other boutique fitness arts because we don't have the overhead mm -hmm. you know what i mean i would say like in order to if we're opening up, you know, Caitlin and I just ordered a, there's a ton of materials for the new locations that we're ordering. Like the overhead to open a Swish House location, like at Sheridan Park, one you go to. Mm -hmm. um, let's say that you and your wife wanted to open up an Orange Theory mm -hmm. on that land right there. Yep. You got to go get like a quarter million dollars. Yeah. That's what I, you have to get. You have to go like, you have to get like the, all the overhead. Yeah. One treadmill at Orange Theory. We, we, I, my kids go to school with the families that own Shred 415. You ever done mm -hmm. Shred? Mm -hmm. One of those treadmills costs eleven thousand dollars. Jesus! There's like thirty. Of them. <laughs> wow. I do love Shred. Overheads <laughs> are bananas. Yeah. Like, that also enables us to be able to charge. Like you can get a Swish House membership for seventy nine bucks a month. Yeah. You, and you can you right. know you're Balls, going to one Vipers. A week. Yep. And like you're and so like the overhead to open Sheridan Park is like five grand. Yeah. Not even. Like like what is our like like it's something like forty five hundred. Like I said, yeah. you, you get the balls, That's the speakers, you get the, equipment. the all the evolution basketballs, the bands, yep. the cones, the vipers, right? The, the ball, the cage. gym time for the first month. Yeah, it's like inclusive of all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. So so that think of the difference and how we can scale this compared to some of the other boutique fitness. It's like yep. if you want to open up if you want to open up in Toledo, Ohio, it's going to cost you five G's to yeah. open up at a Catholic. Eleven thousand for I know like I, I I went to an Orange Theory and they like, you can see your name and then you got to have the orange light and then you got to have these special TV. Yeah, but it's ah! a great business. <laughs> I mean, it's great for them, and it's great for the right people that want to be able to open it up. Absolutely. But it's, yeah. just, it's just a different experience yeah. at the end of the day, it's, right? Like, yeah. it's just a different. Yep. Well, you guys have found, in my opinion, in my opinion, don't count for much. You found, like, <laughs> the ideal fitness workout for anybody. Anybody can come through, kind of get, get, get it done, and have a great rest of the day. I mean, just because, you know, I, I love early morning. I, I yeah. wake up at 4 and Dang. just start going. God bless you. <laughs> well, I don't. I go to bed I, early, too. Yeah, so sometimes I miss the later classes because I'm like, oh, no, I'm tired. This day is over, and it's like yeah, yeah. 8 o'clock. So, Where do you live, sir? What part of the city do you live in? Um, I live in Chatham. So 79th in the expressway, pretty much. Gotcha. Um, and I go, especially I go all over for basketball. I had, I had been, like you said, when you first got here, didn't know where to go. I just – went anywhere and yeah, yeah. and played. I remember they had another another app for pickup. I think it's I I never used it, but I was thinking about yeah, doing some, that. There's some quasi competitors out there, but yeah. we're really a category of one. I mean, everything else is mm -hmm. Either A, pickup centric from a competitor standpoint, or B, they're brick and mortar centric. And uh, frankly, like we got some smart cats. I don't know how they're making money. Yeah, you know, I, you're got to go build a you know, two million dollar monstrosity. Like mm -hmm. you got to pay that rent. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> you know. know. Like, so they're just different business models. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, well, thank you, man. Well, so thank you. I appreciate you guys Our as pleasure. always and all good. So yeah. get out Thank you. Seven, I just want to say thank you to you too. We have a bunch of people that come through our community that are first responders, that are nurses on the front line during COVID, people who really put themselves out there to serve the community every day. And so we're grateful to all our members, but especially to you. And thanks for giving us this platform and this opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, man. And we want to create a... Um, create something for Chicago fire department, you know, maybe like a promo code or something that just gets a ton of firefighters out. Or you know, it's an event. We can talk about that. And yeah, we, we, um, I will talk to my bosses Yeah, because <laughs> I can't make no decisions. I'm, I'm a sure. PI, but <laughs> I hear you. thank you. No, absolutely. Not. All right. Thanks so much. Everyone.